So Capable Kids is an outpatient occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech and language therapy clinic. So we provide rehabilitation services to kids birth through 21. My passion has always been in serving children in a holistic capacity. So often with rehabilitation services, I can provide skills and training and help children to obtain developmental milestones or maybe eat again, that type of thing. But that to me was not fulfilling. I wanted to be able to provide something that the whole family felt an improved quality of life and that I didn't stop at just the therapy. So um, this, that was my real passion, was an opportunity to provide holistic care to children of the community. And my daughter needing it just kind of gave me that avenue, that push that said, now's the time. That feels incredibly rewarding. It never feels like work. It feels like accomplishment every night when you go to bed. Um, but it also makes you realize that it really takes a village and that um, supporting one another is just something that is constantly changing and morphing and you can never feel like you're an expert in it. So um, when I went to law school, it was actually in response to a piece of legislation that had come out that limited how I as an occupational therapist could practice. It was in regards to prosthetics and orthotics and I thought, well, if you write healthcare legislation, you should have to know what it's like to practice under it. So I'm going to go back to law school and I'm going to write healthcare legislation because I know what it's like to practice under it. My first legislative writing class, we spent 47 minutes debating the difference between the words a ah and the. And I said, this is absolutely not for me. I'm not writing legislation. Um, but at that point, my family said, you're a year vested. You better figure out what you're supposed to do with this. Um, so again, did a whole lot of praying and a whole lot of soul searching and discovered that advocacy was really what I wanted to do. And I, the whole mission of the law degree was to find ways to first advocate for my clients, then advocate for my families, and then advocate for my profession. So I actually serve as the legislative chair for the Pennsylvania Occupational Therapy Association. I've written articles for the American Occupational Therapy Association that identifies and defines the legislative pieces of our practice. I think what it taught me is that um, you're always going to be challenged. And if you're truly working in your passion, and you're truly given the opportunity to help and change the face of a child's life, a family's life, or even the delivery of health care, you don't, you don't ever reach that point where you say, I'm done. You reach that point where you say, well, what's the next challenge and where's the next change necessary? And so that's really when I took the leap into being a professor at the University of Pittsburgh because I said, okay, now I have an opportunity to train 50 students every single year to have the same kind of passion that I have and the same desire to change healthcare, but they, they all possess unique skills to do it in an even different manner than I do. Um, and so that's what really brought me there. And then once going there, I was open to the idea of, wouldn't it be great to have the evidence and the research to support this? So it, it introduced me to the world of grant writing and research funding. And so I don't think you ever meet where it's time to stop. I think you just find the new challenges. Leadership to me is servanthood because I didn't really feel like I was a leader until I was fully immersed in serving others. Um, leadership is changing the way somebody is cared for. Leadership is changing the way healthcare is delivered. Leadership is changing an individual's life. And the only way you can do that is through servanthood. So um, to me, it's identifying who needs, um, what they need, and how you can serve them. And through that, you'll become a leader.